everyone good morning and welcome back again to another edition of moments with lulu if you are new to this channel please make sure you're subscribed so you always get notifications whenever i put up a new video and for all my other returning subscribers and those of you who are currently viewing this channel and watching this video right now please give this video a huge thumbs up and share of course with everyone around you friends family loved ones and make sure you do whatever you can to make sure this video gains traction across the youtube platform without further ado we are just gonna go right into this video Today's video is going to be focused on the licensed practical nursing program or the LPM program for short. For those of you who have been following me for a while now, you know that I have made a video where I've talked about the licensed practical nursing versus the RN program. Why people choose to go for different ones, it's up to the individual. The licensed practical nursing, most of you would know that that is a two year program standard. And some people might even take it within like a year and uh, maybe six months, eight months, depending on how they decide to condense their education which is totally up to the individual and i'm just gonna put a very brief disclaimer to say that whatever information i'm giving out today is not gonna be the same information tomorrow or in the next uh, fall or winter intake period for any institution and if you're very curious i only pulled out information from one specific site in Alberta because this is my province of territory so I went to a particular institution's website and looked at their information their current um, requirements as of November 2020 for the program LPM program for students who want to take this program so what I'm trying to say is that the requirements for this school will definitely be slightly different for the requirements from like a school in British Columbia a school in Ontario a school in Toronto a school in Ottawa a school in Halifax Nova Scotia wherever so what I'm saying is that it's dependent on the individual watching this video or if you choose to go through the LPM program, it's your individual responsibility to do further research. I put a link in the description box where you can click on and it's going to show you different provinces that offer the LPM program. And depending on the province you click, it's going to show you all the schools that participate in the licensed practical school nursing program, which means the schools that offer the LPN program to students who are interested in being LPNs after completing two-year nursing program, okay? So we're going to be talking about the requirements of the program, the course requirements, the tuition fees, the post-LPN program, what you have to do to get your license and whatnot. We're also going to be talking about wage, of course, salary. Finances are important to this course in topics like this. You might see me looking away from time to time because I have some numbers in terms of their tuition fees, the salary that I have to, you know, make reference to to make sure I'm giving you correct figures, I would say, because I have a desktop here, so I don't mix up the numbers because they are slightly different numbers for international students versus domestic students. I've already told you the LPM program time can be taken within two years or less slightly less and this is a program for international students who are wondering this program is going to give you a postgraduate work permit once you're done with the program it can give you up to two years for your work permit so don't even worry about that if if that's one of your questions because yes you can work after work with those hours and obtain your permanent residency if that's what you choose to pursue because I am very very specific when it comes to international student matters I am out there. I want to know what's happening. How can we make more money? You know, how can we work? How can we advance in this whole system? Because it's it's crazy with the tuition. So the last thing you want to worry about is if a program is going to let you work after school and if you can use that program to get a permanent residency. So I've answered the question. So yes, the LPM program will give you the opportunity to get a postgraduate work permit you can work the hours required towards obtaining a permanent residency in terms of the um, salary or average wage per hour for this um, position it can be anywhere up to thirty thousand dollars an hour for lpns in canada and this is more specific to the province of alberta because different provinces have different regulatory bodies different nursing and they pay differently again it also depends on where you're working so if you choose to do like acute care unionized versus not unionized um, LPN your pay might be different in the sense that you have like a private provider versus a regulatory organization that has set the standards of pay and you're working for like a government hospital or something like that 
it's going to be different for your pay in that aspect versus if you're a travel nurse you're not going to be expected to make the same thing obviously as a person who is working for the government and you know you're considered an independent contractor i would say if you're going to be doing like travel nursing you know? so that is it when it comes to that aspect and of course there's so many opportunities there's so many areas you can work as an lpn after your school after your education you can work in an acute care facility surgery trauma whatever you choose you will find a lot of things you can work in the community setting you can work as a travel nurse like i've mentioned so it's individual dependent you can work as an educator you can work as an online nurse you know they have different online things nowadays with post pandemic issues and whatnot there's a lot of online opportunities for nurses who are interested in venturing that pathway in terms of like the program requirements of course there are lecture components there are lab components there are practical components which is a huge chunk of your program so when it comes to the practical components i have to tell you this international students taking this lpm program you will be required to get a co-op work permit when you're getting towards your practicum your final preceptorship semester the reason is because the practicum component of this program just like some engineering programs where international students are involved it's considered work unpaid work you're not paid to do the nursing practical preceptorship but it's required that you get a co-op work permit from the government and your employer is going to be your institution at the time so I would advise if you can get this between three to six months prior to your preceptorship as an LPN international student that would be good for you so all you need is just proof that you're going to school which you're gonna get that from your faculty your transcripts and then fill out the online application and forward that to the government and they will give you your co-op work permit wholeheartedly again this is different from the postgraduate work permit and now we're going to talk about the program specification for like entry level so if you're going to go into a program what is the requirement for you to be accepted in our program so this particular institution that i'm looking at has different requirements for their math for their biology and for their english and i will give you the specific percentages for their entry level requirements so i see here for their English, they require an individual to have 60 to 70 percent. That is entry level for you to be accepted. And for math, they require you to have 50 to 70 percent for entry level requirements as well. And in terms of their biology, they require you to have 60 percent. So these are just the ranges, the minimum value, which means, of course, you can get anywhere greater than 50, 60, 70 percent average. For you to be accepted as part of your entry level requirements for the licensed practical nursing for this particular college i'm looking at and again for international students who are coming into this program there is something they call english language proficiency which is to assess your english ability and they do this through exams like IELTS, which is the International English Language Testing System. They also have the TOEFL, and there's one they have here, it's called the Cell Band. And they have different band scores or different scores you must obtain across this English exam, whichever you choose to take. For example, the IELTS, it says here that their minimum is 7.5 to be considered for the program. Again, I will put another disclaimer about the um, English proficiency exam. So I will tell you this briefly. When I went to university, when I did my formative years and my secondary education back home, my first language has always been English and I went to school learning English. Like English was the official language used in teaching, right? So what I'm trying to say is that the university assessed me and said an IELTS is not required and the English exam has been waived for you. But I regardless did the IELTS exam, I still took the English proficiency. It didn't hurt me because in as much as they decide who takes it and who doesn't take it, they have to assess you first. So I'm like, what is the point of waiting for an assessment? I might as well do it and just, you know, I have it regardless of whatever the choice it is. But for individuals who are very money conscious, you know, and you want to really know, do I really need the IOTS? Do I really need an English exam? It's also really good to reach out to the institution. They will assess you and decide whether that is required. But it's, it's very, very changing with different institutions. So this, I would say to ask that specific institution you're looking to apply to. And it could be different from, from individual to individual, depending on what your first language was, 
what you took your official language your education like secondary school primary school what did you learn what was the official language of teaching so all of those things are very very huge factors that it used to assess if an individual needs um, an english proficiency exam or not so it is your responsibility to find that out in terms of practical requirements that we will talk about right now so there are some things that when you come into the LPM program, some schools might want you to have this prior to resuming in the program. Some schools might be like, okay, within your first day, you can get it. It's very different for each institution. But regardless of what it is, there are specific things an individual has to have, like it's your move. So that is more like a safe transfer. They teach you good body mechanics of being in clinical setting, how to transfer patients, how to, you know, just maintain good posture when you're doing stuff that require like friction, turning, twisting, bending of the body. You have to get certified in that area. And this is a very important one, which is your CPR, your cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That is something that is required across, should I say, all healthcare organizations. They require individuals to have that. It doesn't matter whether you're a nursing student because it's basic life support that can save a person's life. So each institution has where they need you to obtain that certification from. So you can always ask in advance. And they also will need you to have a po uh, police information check. So that's like a PIC or a, as, they can even go as far as asking you for your vulnerable sector clearance. Also from a, a police um, station in your province where you're going to school. And the reason they do that is just to make sure that, you know, people who are coming into the program have no, you know, criminal records that are very outstanding you know what i mean of course you don't want someone who is supposed to be in jail like treating your loved one so they just have to scrutinize everyone to make sure that they are having good people in their program people who have had good reputation in terms of their legal and social status while they are here basically so it's compulsory and you can never run away from it okay and there are all basic safety stuff that they might require from the individual like women's workplace health and safety stuff they also require you to sign consent as well because healthcare is um, there's a lot of privacy and confidentiality so they make you sign a consent form prior to starting in like a practical clinical component of the program okay and of course with this program going into the program you're expected to have lectures labs clinicals and clinicals can be anywhere from three days a week to four days a week and it could be up to eight hours per per weekday depending on what's your curriculum is but expect yourself to be in clinical every week for a large number of hours in a day okay it's part of the program there's no escaping there's no running out of it i haven't heard of any nursing program that does nothing without doing the practical component so what then is the what what what, I, what are they learning that's the question because you do theory and then you go to clinical to solidify what you've learned theoretically and what you've practiced in the lab component of your course. You have to transfer that knowledge to the clinical aspect and do a good practice, okay? That's going to help you build your nursing skills and whatnot, okay? Now, we are going to talk about the tuition aspects. This is very important to know that tuition always changes. I've seen some schools change their tuition from term to term, semester to semester, academic year to academic year. Of course, my university did that all the time. Like there was no year that my tuition stayed the same, which I don't expect it to. It's just how life works. It's inflation and you know changes, technology, advancement, everything, economy. You know things always change. But I will read it off from the website that I got this information from. Okay. So tuition cost between three thousand three hundred Canadian dollars to four thousand seven hundred and sixty-five Canadian dollars per term for a domestic student. For a domestic student, so this is a citizen of Canada and also a permanent resident of Canada that will pay this tuition fee up to twenty thousand dollars per academic year, and this is for domestic students. Okay. So when it comes to international students, international students are required to pay anywhere from 4,400, so 4,000, 4,400 Canadian dollars to up to 12,300 Canadian dollars per term, per semester, to a maximum of $48,000 per academic year. So what I'm trying to say is if this is a two-year program, you can see yourself paying up to 90 something thousand dollars for two years. And I will tell you something, they don't do loans for international students that I know of in Canada, which is to say that you can 
always get bursary awards scholarships from your school but when it comes to government banking institutions financial institutions institutions that's not something that happens okay so that's why it's very important to have your finances put together prior to going to somewhere as an international student because it's heavy there's no place in the world even in my own home country nigeria i'm sure there's people who are going to come from other countries to go to the university back home they're going to pay international student fee because it's just it's just how it works there's 22 courses for the program so the program has a list of courses you have to take 22 courses to be completed in two years and some programs might say okay we are going to let you do some prerequisites before coming to the program like anatomy physiology you know all those basic foundational courses which is okay it's your choice you can choose to do that and the university can waive it for you or the institution or the college can waive that off your required program but i will tell you something about that if you're one of those students who intend to do prerequisites or in, in, who intend to do the foundational courses before coming to the program i would advise you to get in contact with that um, institution where you're going to to know okay where can i take my program that is going to be accepted by this by you who is going to admit me to your institution the reason i say that is because different schools have different acceptance criteria like my university, for example, they will accept um, different prerequisites from specific colleges or from specific universities. Not every university, not every online course. So you just have to ask them, well, what do you recommend? Where can I take this course? Not after you take a course, you find out that it's not accepted and you can't get into the program or you have to retake, retake it, which means you've wasted your time and you've wasted your money. So it's your responsibility to clarify that so there are no mixed messages. But lastly, once you're done with your whole post-secondary um, LPN education for two years. The regulatory body for the LPN in Alberta that I know of is CLPNA. So that's the College um, Licensed Practical Nursing of Alberta. That is the body, regulatory body in charge of giving licenses to LPNs who have successfully written their NCLEX LPN and they say, here's your license, go out and practice. So you can never call yourself an LPN without having a license from the regulatory body. And these are also the people that make sure that your practice is in good standing. They are looking out for the public, weeding away bad nurses. So you have to make sure that you keep your academic record in good standing and keep your um, NCLEX LPN exam in good standing. So you can get out and get your license and practice nursing wherever you want and voila! And of course, with the LPN program, there's potential for advancing your career to an RN, to an educator, to doing your master's program, to doing a PhD, to becoming, becoming a manager. What, whatever you choose to do, there's limitless, endless opportunities when it comes to the profession of nursing, medicine, and healthcare. I hope this video has given you lots of information to make wise decisions. And for any other questions you all might have, feel free to leave them in the comment section of this video, and I'll be happy to address them as best as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Bye.